back with another dunk tutorial. This time we're going with the windmill. All right, let's get it started. Jumping right into it. I just have some pointers, some tips, some advice, and some things to look out for and what you should focus on. And it's pretty simple, but let's just jump into it. No pun intended with the jump. Screen recorder, uh, let's go. Okay, start now. All right, so let's make this full screen. All right, so you saw the cl little clips right before this, and so I, I had a little set of clips that I wanted to show you because um, that is the progression from like my fir very first windmill, and just I'm gonna go through it and I'll just show you instead of explaining it. So this is my very first windmill on a 10 foot hoop, and I snuck it in there. Can I make this better quality? I think so. So as you see here, sorry for the volume, is here's a few things I wanna point out. So first thing is it's good timing. So the timing you want is when it bounces, you're about to go take off and you're jumping as the ball is above you. Like you want to be behind the ball and things like that. But the main thing to look at is the height of the ball. So we're going to be going through that a lot in this video, but mainly for this one is the height of the ball is not moving up and it's not coming down. It's better if it's coming down too, but the point is it's not going up because that way when you jump, you're not going for it. You're kind of catching it and having the most efficient movement possible. So as you see here, the ball is almost stopping its upward momentum. So that way when I jump, I go to grab it and I can bring it right back down. If it's going up, I have to like go get it first or like pull it against its direction and that's a little bit harder and we're just trying to maximize the efficiency of the windmill motion. And the other thing, so for this one, as you see, I'm catching it almost like at my face level, maybe even under it, and that's pretty low. And as we see, as I get better at the windmill, I'll be catching it a little bit higher. And it's more of a real windmill when you catch it above and bring it all the way around, but it's a good starting point. And um, the other thing I wanna point out is that the location of the ball, there's a sweet spot. If it's too high or too low, it's really hard. And to get more into that is that if it's too low, you're not going to get that arm swing. You're going to be like reaching down like this and you're not going to be able to jump. You're going to like be focusing on grabbing the ball without getting a full jump. So this one, even though I'm kind of low, it was still a little high enough where I was able to get some of my arm swing and be able to get like, like a 75% rotation and then dunk it. So you really want to try to get that sweet spot a little bit above where you think you may do it. And that's something I learned when I was trying to get my first windmill dunk is that sometimes when I threw it higher than I thought I could get a full rotation on, I would actually get a better jump and closer than the low the low tosses, even though the low tosses, I did less of a rotation. So that, just keep that in mind. And I snuck that baby in. All right, now this was soon after that, another 10 foot rim, but um, turn this off real quick. Sorry about that. Um, and same thing, uh, not the prettiest form, but the timing is really good. I'm jumping and the ball is almost stopping right when I grab it. I'm a little higher this time, but Again, not the fullest rotation, but good timing and good placement of the ball. And as you see, my form's a little strange. I'm not like, it's not perfect, but it's pretty good. And I'm able to get it there. And you want to be a certain distance from the rim, which is where we'll see on the next video. Now, this one's a good video to see. I think I have it in slow mo back. Okay, so now here's the next one. This one's a little bit too close to the rim, but I'm able to get it just around. But as you see, it's not as fluid and it's not as pretty looking or... It doesn't look as efficient as it could be. So as you look, the timing is there, but I'm having to jump and kind of like reach back. So I'm, I'm, it's a decent catch, but I'm like already, you already see me like leaning. It's not really going forwards with it. If you can go forwards with it, it makes for a much more efficient movement. And I'm able to reach up and just get it in, but I'm also dunking on the side of the rim, which is not the most optimal, not because it's harder or anything like that, but you're probably not maximizing your jump and your peak and hitting your jump at your peak when you're doing the motion. So just keep that in mind as well. Try to get the placement right with the ball um, when you're doing windmill. Now, moving on to this one, I wanted to throw this in here just to try to show you different styles. This is a left-right approach when I used to have some versatility. And same thing um, is the timing is there. It's always about the same timing. The ball bounces and then I'm getting into my gather my big penultimate and I'm jumping and it's a little bit above my head, which is perfect for what I'm at, the level I'm at where I can't get a full rotation where I catch it up here, but it's, it's up enough where I can get some of my arm swing. Now, I wanna get into, the reason I have this left right is I wanna get into left right versus right left. Right left might be a little easier only because it's a little more natural to, to bring the motion around. Like if you jump 
right, left, you're going like this. So if this is like, let's see what's the best way I can do this. If I'm looking at you, I, I plant, plant my left foot and then I catch it and bring it to the side of my body. But there are different variations when you do right, left. Some people stay more straight and kind of bring it back like this. Some people turn more sideways and bring it like this. But it's not as varied as varied as it is left right. A lot of people have different styles on left right where they catch it over here and bring it across their body or they catch it like right in the middle and bring it back left right. This one's a little bit more, a little bit in between both of those. So it's hard to tell from this video, but I think it's a little bit on my left of my head and then I bring it right here. And um, just if you're trying to do it left right, you can kill windmills. Kill Gannon's great at that uh, left right windmill. So you can take a look at his form, it's really great. But the same thing is that you want it high and you gotta find the placement left and right, which is another thing that I learned about my right left windmill, is that after trying it over and over again, I learned exactly where to throw it. And for me, it was a little bit to my right because when I would jump, I want it a little bit on my right so I could just bring it here. If it's on my left, I'm gonna, I'm gonna plant and jump and have to reach here and it's just not as efficient. So you have to find, and you feel like you want it in the middle, but for me, it's a little bit to my right. It might not even be to the right. I just throw it thinking a little bit to the right and my plant might take me right to the middle of it. I don't know. But the point is, try to find the placement. Um, so you want the, so far we want the right height of the ball, and you want the right timing where it's not going up and it's not coming down. You kind of want it right in that sweet spot, so it's still up, but it's not really moving. So you could grab it, and then you also want the right positioning left and right. And just it takes a lot of practice with the timing. I practice a lot on nine eight, uh, just getting that timing down, and it takes a lot of speed with the rotation that I didn't know until I started practicing. So once you try it, you may not be coming close, but you can dunk really easily. It's probably that rotation speed. So just try it over and over again. Even if you get rim stuff, that's really good. So let's move on to the next one. So this one, same rim, but now I'm doing right left, and it's pretty good. But as you see, it's a little awkward again, and that's because the ball is kind of close to the rim, and I'm jumping more straight up and down. And for my style, I jump a little bit better, not jumping forwards, but it's hard to jump all straight up and down. So this one was straight up and I go up and as you see, I'm kind of reaching at the very end. I'm not really going as fluid as a motion as I could be, but it was pretty good. The timing was really good. The height was a little higher than I was. This was when I was starting to get a little bit better at it. So the, it's a little bit up there, but as you see, I'm still catching it. Like I just left the ground, my arms aren't fully up. Next level is gonna be like crazy up here, then bring it all around. But this is kind of next level compared to the last couple of clips we've seen, but again, this is like a 9-10 rim, and um, bring it around, and then finish it pretty good. Now, the next one is the same day, and I really like this one because it was my best one for a long time, and it goes to show you that there's a lot to do with the efficiency of the dunk, and the timing, and the positioning, and there's a lot to that that you can practice to get really a lot a much better dunk out of the same vertical, because I don't think I jumped any higher, I just think I jumped a lot better with this dunk so if I run it real quick, let me put the quality down a little bit because I don't know if you could, it could play that full speed. But, okay, so now if we break this down, again, it's, it's good distance from the rim. It's probably the perfect distance so I can take off and get my peak right as I finish. I'm at my peak of my jump. It's a perfect height. It's a perfect timing. The ball kind of stopped right there. It's a perfect height where I get almost a full arms, uh, arm reach, but also I get my full arm swing. So my arms are above my head, but I'm not reaching too high. And then I'm catching it right as I leave the ground, getting a perfect rotation, perfect timing. As you see, it looks like Dwayne Wade. I'll, maybe I'll put that little picture of him that it looks just like him on this. Anyway, the point is it looks like a real windmill. Get the full rotation and then I flush it perfectly, hits the back of the rim and shoots down. And even though I didn't hit maybe like my forearm, I hit maybe even just the middle of my palm, the timing and the cleanliness of the dunk makes for a really good impactful dunk. And so all those things add up to make a much better looking dunk than the one before it. And all those factors come into play that you could practice and learn about what you're doing differently to get your windmill on point. So one more time, just run this back, this was nice bang that thing. But anyway, the point is also, even though I, I pretty much crushed that one, it could be my palm, could be my wrist, but the point is it's not like down here, which is now, or I didn't get like my whole hand in the rim. So there's levels to it that you might not be able to notice unless someone breaks it down like this, but you can get that efficient bang of a dunk if you have the timing right and you have the positioning right. So look for that and also try to get your um, 
efficiency good with all these dunks by doing low rims and your speed good and just your timing and positioning are so important that you can get a lot of dunks down. That's why I'm able to windmill so well compared to like dribble dunks or some dunks that I'm, I stink at because I've practiced this, the I've practiced all the lobs and all these technique for so long. It was the first trick I, well, I really wanted to get. So I practiced it over and over and over again and I learned exactly where to throw the ball. So now it's like second nature. I just throw it and it's like the perfect timing. I just got it down and I got that sweet spot so many times that I know I can go get it. Anyway, that's pretty much it. So now we're on to my best one yet that I like the most. This is a 10 foot rim. I hope that's playing pretty smoothly, but watch it real quick in slow-mo. So what's great about this one, 10 foot rim, is that, play it, come on. So this one, good timing again. I throw it, it's really good positioning from the rim. It's a good amount of distance where I can, I'm not reaching forwards either. That's another thing I'm realizing. You don't want to jump and reach forwards. You want to reach up, but not too far where you're like, like you have to reach for the rim. There's a whole spacing issue with the front, uh, how close you are to the rim. So definitely try to get that down. This is about the most perfect you can get. Perfect height where I'm pretty much reaching almost full arms and it's pretty close to the rim. It's almost, let's see, it's like maybe a foot and a half under the rim. But anyway, I have to go get it a little bit still reaching for it. It's really high up there. My arms are almost straight up. I get a really good jump. I bring it all the way around and then the finish, even though it's, it looks like it rattles in, I think that's just because my hand hits the rim as the ball does. So it brings the rim down a little bit. So it kind of rattles in, but I think if it was a stiffer rim and my hand didn't affect the rim, it would have shot down like the last one. Cause I could feel my whole hand in the rim and the ball, went down and I felt like I got the ball in a downward motion as well. That's why I was, it stayed in there. And that's pretty big on a dunk like that. So I was able to, on 10 feet, get a full rotation, high toss, get a full rotation, and dunk it with room to spare. And that's kind of how you know you're getting to the next level of the windmill. And that's kind of the progression of how you want your windmill to go. Um, just to run it back really quick, you want to make sure your spacing is good. Make sure whatever plant you are, you, you get comfortable with, what, with the left and right aspect of where you want to place the ball. If you're right left, for me, it's a little bit to the right of like the middle of the rim. So I jump and I catch it and it's kind of on my right side. I think that's why it is. It's not really reaching to the right, but when I, I mentally throw it a little bit to the right, I jump and it's over here instead of like a little bit to my left. So I don't know if it's actually to my right, but I just, I don't throw it right at the middle of the rim as if I'm going for a one-hander. And if you're left, right, you really have to play with it. But um, I remember when I was doing left, right, a lot of it was making sure it was high enough because a lot of times it's too low and low tosses I might, might be harder left, right, just because you have to kind of bring it across your body and you're jumping, but like this. But either way, one thing I really noticed, I think my biggest tip was the sweet spot, which is I was trying to throw it low so I can get like a half a windmill just to get the motion faster. But when I would throw a higher toss and have to go get it, I w you can feel a difference in your jump because you have to go get it a little bit and you can get a better jump with a more full of a rotation than if you were to get a lower, less rotation. It seems like you might already notice that already, but to me, it would seem like you can get closer to a windmill if you do less of a rotation. But the fact is, if you hit that sweet spot with the ball, you get a better jump and then everything's more efficient and you might get a better chance of landing that windmill. Okay, so I hope that really helps. Um, I could do this again if you miss some tips or you have some questions, ask all your questions in the comments and the uh, feedback, whatever you want to see next. Um, I have a lot of other dunks we can do. I'll probably do maybe an East Bay next. I'm thinking just because I'm trying to analyze it myself. I see a lot of flaws in my own technique that I can point out. I'm a lot better at seeing uh, what's wrong with my form than actually fixing it. I'm trying to fix it, but it's just hard. That's what's great about this windmill is that it's not as difficult for me. I was able to learn the technique pretty quick and then just rep it out. With the East Bay, it seems like my technique breaks down very easily and I think that's because of my inflexibility with my legs and my hips. Anyway, that's not the point. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know what you think. Ask your questions. If it was too fast, let me know. If I spoke uh, 100 miles an hour, let me know. But placement, timing of when you catch the ball, timing of when you jump, um, what else? Uh, make sure it's the right height and just practice that motion over and over again and practice the placement. I think I said that eight times, but the motion's really important as well. And that's your windmill tutorial. I'll freaking see ya.